welcome to another version of Video Tuesday Tapestry. It's wonderful to have you with us. And today I'm honored to have with me Father Javier Virgen, Director of Vocations for the Diocese of Salt Lake City, and also Deacon Ricardo Arias, who is the Associate Director of Vocations for the Diocese of Salt Lake City. Welcome to you both. Thank you, Thank you Bishop. Thank you very much. Today we're going to talk about, obviously, vocations to the Roman Catholic priesthood. This is a very important topic in our church today. All of us know that we need more priestly vocations. We need more priests. And we pray for that intention. I hope that we all pray for that very fervently and pray for it often, that the Lord of the harvest will give us more vocations. We've been very blessed in this diocese with wonderful men who have responded to Christ's call to be a priest. We've been served selflessly and generously by wonderful priests throughout the years of this diocese. These two fine gentlemen, Father Javier Virgen and Deacon Ricardo Arias, work in the vocation office. Their job, their ministry, is to foster vocation. Christ is the one who calls men to the priesthood, and we do our best to create a fertile field, to create a, an atmosphere in which men can hear Christ's call to be priests. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how many seminarians we have, where they study, who they are, and then we're going to also talk a little bit about um, what we can do to foster more vocations to the priesthood. So gentlemen, let me ask you first if you could give our, our listeners just a, an overview. Uh, how many seminarians do we have? Where are they studying? Where are they from? Who are they? Just to kind of give us a little insight into um, who they are at this time. Currently, Bishop, we have uh, nine seminarians in our diocese, and I think they are very uh, good candidates to the priesthood. Um, we have two in Rome, uh, two, uh, three in Mount Angel, two in St. Patrick's in Mill Park, and uh, we're going to send two for the first time to San Antonio, Texas. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That's exciting. That's very good for, for a diocese of our size. That's wonderful to have uh, nine seminarians. Nine seminarians, Bishop, and we have... Uh, you know, they are from Mexico, we are from Mexico, from uh, Utah, and, um, and we have more uh, coming also from Mexico in, in the future. Mm -hmm. the, especially, this is very important because uh, the Hispanic community in our state is growing, and the ministry is, uh, for them, is uh, demanding more Spanish-speaking uh, seminarians. Wonderful, and of course, I'm so pleased that the Lord has given us these vocations from Mexico and Colombia and El Salvador and other countries. At the same time, we of course do want to foster vocations from home here in Utah. I mean, we need to ask our young men and older men to respond to Christ's call from Utah. So that's something we're working on. What do they like, these gentlemen? Are they different than uh, uh, your other people? Are they the same? What do they like? No, they are not different. They are uh, like, uh, you know, uh, all the people. They are, uh, you know, current people that uh, uh, live their life uh, in, in, in the normal situation of all the Jews in, in, in our diocese in the world. Uh, they not only pray and they are not only uh, are following their vocation, and, and, but they, they are living in, in their homes before they enter to the seminary. They have, uh, you know, uh, different activities, like it's not only praying and studying and, and, you know, theology or this kind of thing, but they, they, they can do and they are doing all, all kinds of stuff. You know. I'm glad you said that because that's my impression also. That these are very representative young men that we have studying for the priesthood. They play sports, they play the guitar, they sing, they, they go to movies, they, they have interests similar to any uh, uh, young men their age. And so uh, I think sometimes people might think that, well, uh, God couldn't be calling me, you know. But the reality is he calls all kinds of people to be priests. Yeah. And what are their ages? How old are they? Probably between uh, the 35 and 25. So around the, the 25 to 35, 35 age. age. I know that from time to time we have yeah. somebody in their 40s even. Right. But basically they're about that range. And have they been to college for the most part? 
most of the seminars, yes, the Finnish college is already bishop, and then and in the uh, final, I would say, stage of the seminar, which is theology. Theology, yeah. mm -hmm. wonderful. And how long does it take to for the theological studies? You know, it depends, bishop, because uh, if uh, they have a philosophy, uh, they can spend maybe six or seven years with theology and pastoral year. Um, but sometimes we have, for example, one seminarian from Mexico uh, coming next year to Mount Angel, uh, and he is going to start from college, mm -hmm. and he will be maybe uh, around eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. But Study. he's starting. But Perfect. he's very young. And I want our listeners to remember that 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 means four years of college, and then about. Five, five years, years of postgraduate work, four years of study, and then a year of pastoral work in the parish. So, and actually, I always tell the seminarians, enjoy it when you can, because this is a, a privileged time of your life to be able to have this kind of time to study theology, to pray, to be formed, you know, in the ways of priesthood and spirituality. This is a great time. It's a wonderful time. There are many days when I wish I was back in the seminary and, and just studying. It would be awfully nice. Tell me, uh, what are you doing to foster vocations in this diocese? What kinds of activities or programs do you have to help, uh, how would I put it, to help our Lord get through to these men that he's calling them to be priests? First of all, Bishop, I think we are going to uh, try to uh, make awareness of uh, praying for vocations, whether it be the priest, and the priest for the pulpit to uh, encourage the people, the communities, and their uh, parishioners to pray for vocations as, as much as they can. But there are certain uh, ways that we are going to approach more, let's put it this way, aggressively, because as you know, the reality of uh, needs of the priests are very, very much needed. So, for example, uh, we have named in every single parish and mission uh, what we call vocation promoted. And we're going to have a kind of retreat in next year, probably during February. So in that reunion, you and us as, as a team will make uh, clear what's the role of vocation, vocation, promoter, vocation promoter, and uh, um, we'll go from there. Wonderful. That's a great idea. I, I, I'm glad you are both promoting this. It's called a vocation promoter, and each parish, each school has one, and this person typically a lay person, but not always, is going to know what's going on in the vocations office, what are the programs we're trying to foster, how can we reach out to a young man. What would be uh, one of the best ways, do you suppose, to promote vocations? Here I am, uh, uh, you know, uh, Joe and Mary Catholic going to Mass on Sunday. What can I do to promote vocations to the priesthood? help the families to be aware to talk about vocations in, in their family environment. Because uh, John Paul II said that the, the family needs to be what they, they are, a community of love where Christian values of prayer, service, commitment, love can be learned. And I think uh, uh, the, the vocation promoters can you know, promote this at, at the parish level, uh, helping families to to open and to talk with their children about the important vocations. Good point, uh, Deacon Ricardo. And I think I also, to take your lead there, I remember Pope John Paul II of Happy Memory saying that the home is the first seminary, that that's where we mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. hear the call. And it's critically important for parents to promote vocations to the priesthood. If parents do not value the priesthood, if parents do not show that they would be proud and happy and excited for their sons to be priests, that's going to have a deleterious effect. It's going to have a negative effect. Uh, and, and so it's really important that the parents are excited about the possibility and that they, that they let that be known to their sons, that they, this would be wonderful if you'd be a priest. I know that uh, one of the ideas we're going to be looking at in 2012 is the whole idea of, um, of Eucharistic adoration. The, the prayer is critically important uh, for vocations, to, to pray uh, that the Lord of the harvest will send us more priests. Um, how about the whole idea of inviting? I've heard that that's important, that 
the simple thing, like somebody saying to a young man, have you considered a vocation to the priesthood? Have you heard about that as being effective? Oh, absolutely, Bishop. As a matter of fact, uh, Ricardo and I, when, especially myself, when I go to the, to the missions or parishes to talk about mission appeal or vocation even, I, after Mass, I have the chances to, I many chances to go with uh, youth people and say directly, hey, can I talk to you for a moment? Yes. Would you ever consider to become a priest? And then they never. I, I had never thought to be about, uh, about this, but from now on I will consider it. So if the priest, or any you know, uh, Catholic, uh, whether me, men or women, but the priest especially will approach par parishioners and youth, uh, young men, about the priesthood, that would be more effective and powerful, I would, I would think. Yeah, according, yeah. according to a statistic, uh, said that uh, usually most of the seminarians, they were invited by the priest mm -hmm. to, to the vocation of the priesthood. Mm -hmm. The other thing, which you mentioned about how to foster, uh, you know, um, Father uh, Javier mentioned about uh, the vocation promoter program, but uh, in the future, I think uh, we, we can work also with uh, there are different programs like the Chalice program, the uh, uh, CARS program. Say a few words about this program. This, this program, Please. for example, mm -hmm. the Chalice, Chalice program is, is a program that the, the family can have a Chalice, uh, you know, uh, after a, a special uh, blessing by the pastor at the church, and that Chalice can be sent to homes for a week or two weeks to pray specifically for vocations. And after that, they can um, rotate to another family. And that way, the beautiful. whole parish be, will be involved. And the cross is the same. And the cross is yeah. the same. Take the cross home. Take the cross home. Other program can be, you know, St. Andrew uh, program. That is, uh, uh, maybe if you know very well, is uh, when we have, or a diocese have, uh, maybe uh, two, three, or four uh, prospective candidates can be invited for a dinner or maybe a, a small social gathering with the beach of the vocation team mm -hmm. to, you know, talk about vocation and to Great. motivate them. I think it's a good idea. Those are wonderful programs. Mm -hmm. I have another, uh, probably, Bishop, is being done in the past in our diocese when Father Michael Winter, Monsignor Michael Winter, and Sister Jeremiah, rest in peace. They used to, uh, you know, uh, run the office of vocations. And I remember they used to have vocation awareness once a month. Mm -hmm. I think if we start this program again, many candidates will come and reflect upon it, and you know, and they will be able to know more about this college of the prison and religious life. Well, these are great ideas, gentlemen. I thank you so much for them. And I think that that gives all of us, doesn't it, listeners, uh, Certainly, it reminds me to do more inviting. I, I I give I do about 35 confirmations a year throughout the diocese, and uh, quite often, to be honest, I forget to bring that into my homily. I'm trying to bring in the, the gospel and bring in the Holy Spirit and bring in their sponsors, and mm -hmm. and then I forget. Oops! I got to make sure I mention priesthood and religious vocations to the the uh, professed life, the sisters. Uh, as well, and uh, and, the, and the brothers, the religious brothers. So this is important to do, that we have to keep this as a priority. I think, you know, we often lament the fact that we don't have enough priests, but then we stop. Lamenting the lack of priests, it doesn't really help matters. What we need to do is, what can I do, you know, as bishop? What can you do as priest and deacon? What can you do as a member of our diocese to promote vocations? And of course, I want to stress, though, that uh, Steve Rossetti, Father Steve Rossetti, wrote a book on, on priesthood and, 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 and how they're happy. But it also shows that diocesan priests, parish priests, are very, very happy, too. So please consider <laughs> being a diocesan priest, a parish priest, because we need priests in our diocese. And I'm glad that the monks are happy. God bless them. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be just as no, happy in the parish. You'll be just as happy in the parish. Father Javier, anything? Yes. Uh, just, um, as you have done it before, Bishop, and you, can, you continue doing it, uh, I will encourage all the priests in our diocese, not only to pray for vocations and to talk to their parents, but once in a while, maybe in every single, maybe, maybe every opportunity they have, talk to a young man and directly. Have you thought to become a priest? Give me a chance. And uh, if there's some candidates, do not 
Okay, have any doubts, just call us our way and we'll be there to help out. Wonderful, thank you for that. Well, what, so the number they should call is, call the Pastoral Center at 801-328-8641. That's 801-328-8641. Or go online to the uh, homepage of the Diocese of Salt Lake City, www.dioslc.org. That's www.dioslc.org. Um, Pray about it. Think about it. We're here to help you. If you're thinking of becoming a priest, we'd love to hear from you. And we'll do everything we can to support you. And if it truly is Christ calling you to the priesthood, we'll look forward one day to having you here serving in this wonderful diocese of Salt Lake City as a priest of God. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Well, what, so the number they should call is call the Pastoral Center at 801-328-8641. That's 801-328-8641. 8641 or go online to the uh, home page of the Diocese of Salt Lake City www.dioslc.org that's www.dioslc.org uh, pray about it think about it we're here to help you if you're thinking of becoming a priest we'd love to hear from you and we'll do everything we can to support you and if it truly is Christ calling you to the priesthood We'll look forward one day to having you here serving in this wonderful diocese of Salt Lake City as a priest of God. Thank you, John, and very much. God bless you both. Thank, thank you. you all for... Thank you, Bishop, for your great support, and thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to serve in this, in this ministry. You're most welcome. God bless you now. Thanks for joining in, and all the best to you.